Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Libra New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. We continue our work following the cycle of new moons, bringing our collective focus to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As we, as we work with the astrological energies available throughout the cycles of the new moon, this time we bring our focus through the lens of energy of Libra to the goal number eight decent work and economic growth. Today, our focalizers are Frida Kemp from Canada, Silvana de Prado from Australia, and Michael Stacy from the United States. Today, we experiment uh, with using a Zoom platform uh, versus our regular go-to webinar. Uh, it's an experiment and we might have some little technical glitches here and there. So we ask for your uh, forgiveness and patience as we work with this new uh, tool. So thank you for joining us and let's work together. And over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. So just reminding us of our purpose. We're gathering once a month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good that is expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We participate in group meditation on these formulated thought forms of solution that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. These SDG thought forms help create physical conditions leading to the transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Through this meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many people as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many actions. We use the opportunity of the new moon cycles and the available astro astrological energies to distribute, radiate, and anchor intention on the physical plane. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation, and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. Over to Dot now, as we go through the naming circle to bring us all together into alignment. Thank you, Rebecca. In the naming circle, we are uniting our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into this group work, together and as a group. In uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. So we will do this. Uh, you can see if you click on uh, participants, you'll see that the list. And when I call your name, if you will say your full name and where you are calling in from. This is Dot Maver calling in from New Hampshire, USA. And then I will say welcome and we continue. Daniela, you may have to unmute yourself, please, and mute after you sound your name and where you're calling in from. Daniela. Hello, everyone. Daniela Nistorovic, I'm calling in from Belgium, Brussels. Welcome, Daniela. Alexander. 
Hello, this is Alexander Ilchuk from, calling from New York, USA. And uh, Katja Kaufman, <clears throat> also from New York. Welcome, Alexander and Katja. Rebecca. Welcome, Rebecca. Annette. This is Annette Lüffler from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Avon. Please don't forget to unmute yourself. Avon Madison from San Francisco Bay Area, United States of America. Welcome, Avon. Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Bernard. Bernard Schmering from uh, France. Welcome, Bernard. Cheryl. Welcome, Cheryl. Dacia. Dacia Moss from Victoria, Canada. Welcome, Daisha. Darcy. Darcy from Washington, D.C., U.S. Welcome, Darcy. Irana. Hello, everyone. This is Irana from Toronto. Welcome, Irana. Frida. Camp from Honey Harbor, Georgian Bay, Ontario, Canada. Welcome, Frida. Helena. Helena Bach Hughes from um, Northern California, Sacramento area. Welcome, Helena. Hilda. Welcome, Hilda. Josette. Welcome, Josette. Karen. Karen Gendron. This is Karen Gendron from Southern Oregon, USA. Welcome, Karen. Karen Gritska. Welcome, Karen. Lerna. Welcome, Lerna. Michael. This is Michael Stacy from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome, Michael. Nanette. Please remember to unmute yourself. Welcome, Nanette. Olga. Hello from Athens, Greece. This is Oliver Deligan. Welcome, Olga. Richard. Richard from Sunshine Coast, Australia. Welcome, Richard. Sheldon. This is Sheldon Hughes from Northern California. Welcome, Sheldon. Barbara. Welcome, Barbara. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Dot, and thank you, everyone. Um, good to 
good to come together and hear people's voices. And sorry, anyone who had difficulty figuring out the new, the unmute button in this new context. Um, so we're going to hand over to the focalizing triangle now and Frida will take us through an alignment. Well, thanks and welcome everybody. Um, we're here to, uh, to ponder and to think about and talk about uh, goal A, decent work and economic growth. So I'd like you to just take a moment. Um, we've gone through this um, naming ceremony. So take a moment now to connect with one another and with the heart of each person. I said, if I don't phone you in 15 minutes, I'm in trouble. Right? <laughs> so I went out and I tied the boat. To the and boat connect with the heart center of the group. Then sure. you know, I thought, you're stupid because if you don't phone 15 minutes, who's going to come get you? <laughs> and the answer is, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> with the heart and center then, of the new group of world servers. We connect with the center we call the human race or humanity. We connect with the United Nations. As an expression. And we connect with the spirit and the essence of goal eight, decent work and economic growth. And finally, we connect with the planetary heart center. The spiritual hierarchy and the masters of wisdom were guiding this work. So we begin this work in Libra. And we know that Libra is connected with this with this goal through the concept of work and through the concept of money. I'm going to read a short passage here from The Labors of Hercules, page 135. Libra is closely connected with and explains the third aspect of the Godhead, and hence it is the governing sign and a major determining factor where law, sex, and money are concerned. The Tibetan states that his students will make a careful study of these three, law, first aspect, relationship between the pairs of opposites, sex, second aspect, and concretized energy called money, third aspect, as they express themselves today and as they can express themselves in the future, they will have a picture of physical human achievement and of future spiritual expression, which will be instructive and most worthwhile. The whole process is accounted for by the activity of the three rulers of Libra, Venus, Uranus, and Saturn. And I will read also the passage from uh, Esoteric Astrology that also relates to this topic. It is through a study of Libra that light upon the third aspect will come. The first aspect of will or power expresses itself in this sign as law, as legislation, legality, justice. The second aspect manifests as a relationship between the pairs of opposites, of which the scales are the symbol, and upon the physical plane shows itself as sex. The third aspect demonstrates as concretized energy, and this we call money. The third aspect is, as you know, the cent 
creator aspect and the energy which produces the outer tangible plane of manifestation, the form side of light. And that's from Esoteric Astrology, page 224. So thank you. And now I'm going to turn it over um, to um, Silvano and Michael, who have a wonderful uh, presentation for us on this theme of Goal 8. Thank you. Michael, please share your screen. It's a share button at the uh, near control panel or at the bottom of the screen. Okay. What else do I need to do? Share. Can you see it now? Yes. Good. So again, thank you, Frida, for the beautiful opening alignment. The sustainable development goal seems to help promote continuing a materialistic economy, but its focus is on creating a more level playing field for everyone. Even in a future spiritual economy, material goods such as food, clothing, and shelter will continue to be needed by humanity, and this through the next few millennia. The question is, how can we be useful to hierarchy during this transition period? Oh, come on. And next slide. There it is. The Tibetan alludes to sharing being an aspect of the economy of the coming age. But do we, or even the bulk of humanity, understand there are differences between sharing and giving? Don't we generally consider them to be the same thing? Let's look at the definitions. Give is the root of giving. The 1973 edition of the Random House Dictionary of the English Language has 55 definitions. The first, and perhaps most common, is shown in the slide. It indicates a single direction means of exchange. Share is the root of sharing. The same dictionary has only seven definitions, and these primarily address economics. The fifth de definition is shown in the slide. It signifies group use and enjoyment. I suggest that sharing promotes the divine flow of planetary prana as a means of exchange in all directions. So is giving a problem? This is an excellent question. Our initial response is probably, no, never. Good feelings about giving is an emotional, emotional response. So let us look a little closer. First, what is the intention in giving? Is it truly selfless or is there some lurking selfish reason or reasons underlying the motive? Might selfish intention, building up the personality, lead to an increase in glamour in one's life? What about the creation of karmic ties? Where giving leads to a person's or group's dependence upon the giver, aren't ties created? And then what happens when the flow stops? This leads to another question about whether giving becomes a help or a hindrance. For example, many years ago, when living in another city, I met a homeless man begging for money. He considered his begging as helping the karma of others. So is the man helped or is he hindered by giving him what he asked for? To really answer questions such as this, let us be more open to the straight knowledge of the intuition through Buddhic impression. And let's look at sharing in context. In the books published by Lucis Trust, the Tibetan uses the term share or sharing in a number of different ways. Some of these include the divine plan relating to the interpretation of logoic purpose by the masters of wisdom. As we share in this work, 
it would be nice to know for sure what that plan is, rather than our distorted vision of it. How can we, as units of humanity, share with all kingdoms of nature? And then world need, as it relates to the many fields of service through all kingdoms of nature, not only just the human kingdom. Each of us individually and collectively make a difference. Are we able to become so lost in world service that our personality issues fade into the background? Finally, spiritual knowledge, acquired and passed along to those who are ready as we tread the initiatory path. As we experience and grow individually, so does our group grow, thus expressing a sharing of energetic flow. We must be careful to avoid damming up the energy flowing into and through us. Are we able to lovingly use our esoteric knowledge to enlighten public opinion? In terms of this strategic development goal, I suggest that we must expand our concept of what constitutes the economy beyond strictly material goods and services. Finally, what are the next steps forward? I've given a couple of quotations from the Tibetan, from uh, Problems of Humanity. We must, look, we must learn to look beyond any ideological distortions of what we consider to be the divine plan. It is the principle of sharing which we must learn and express in our daily lives so that we will be living examples to others. It is a lesson of identification, non-separateness, and love. The principle of sharing is grounded in right human relations that will ultimately lead to world peace. Unfortunately, at present, all socioeconomic systems are infected with varying amounts of selfishness and greed. I close my portion of this sharing with these words from the Tibetan from Problems of Humanity, page 177, quote, the World Economic Council or whatever body represents the sources, resources of the world, must free itself from fraudulent politics, capitalistic influence, and its devious scheming. It must set the resources of the earth free for the use of humanity. This will be a lengthy task, but it will be possible when world need is better appreciated. An enlightened public opinion will make the decisions of the Economic Council practical and possible. Sharing and cooperation must be taught instead of greed and competition. And now Savannah will share her thoughts and ideas from several authors about the future economy. Okay, can everyone hear me? Um, thank you, Michael. And I will now speak to the aspect of goal eight that relates to economic growth. And the word growth in its current understanding may need some clarification as well as challenging. So what is economics? It is defined as a social science concerned with the production, distribution and consumption of goods and services. A current system of economics relies on growth. More goods and services, high levels of consumerism equals jobs and prosperity. But at what cost to our beautiful planet, its resources, and exploitation of the working poor? Is the disparity in wealth closing or are we engaging in a race to the bottom? How sustainable is this structure to our planet, to its resources and the flow of wealth distribution? DK indicates, the biggest difficulty with our attitude to money is that it's based on wrong thought which has existed for generations, leading to wrong attitudes, even, according to the Tibetan, among the most devoted disciples. He goes on to say that in the regeneration of money and in the changing of man's attitude to it will eventually come world release. Next slide, Michael. Bringing sacredness back to economics is promoted through inspired thinkers the likes of Charles Weinstein and Bernard Leiter. Weinstein in his book, Sacred Economics, and I have to say it's a fabulous read and true to his gifting, 
um, consciousness is a free download if you're interested. He says that because the amount of money owed is greater than the amount of money already existing, new money has to be made to keep the whole system going. We therefore have to create more goods and services to raise the extra money. Growth is good and it's an accepted societal norm. They also state that in our current model, interest on money saved and borrowed, which lies at the heart of the current financial system, plays into the world's problems of increasing debt and the need for constant growth. Paying or receiving interest on a loan is so universally accepted, but have we forgotten that usury, which means interest on money, was outlawed by the Catholic Church and other religious authorities? The sin of usury was battled with well into the 19th century, and it is only Islam today that reminds its people of this sin. Next slide. So what is the problem with interest? It concentrates wealth, for interest payments lead to a continuous movement of wealth from the majority to the minority, because it is the wealthiest people and organisations who own the most interest-bearing assets. Interest payments encourage saving, which takes money out of productive activity, reducing the circuitry flow of income. Safety nets need to be put into place like progressive taxation, welfare provision to counter this effect. And such models are always resisted by the wealthy, for it is their money that is being redistributed. So what can be done? Well, currently trials are taking place in Finland with other countries observing and that is a universal basic income. As technologies become more sophisticated, an obvious consequence is a shrinking job market. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a, had a need to work only part-time, to be able to share the jobs, so that we have the time to pursue other passions and creativities. And those who do not have the means to access paid employment, they have the money to enjoy at least the basics without judgment or discrimination. It is a human right that everyone has access to the basics of survival, food, shelter, safety, education, health, as illustrated in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Next slide. Through media coverage, it is apparent the havoc that growing demand is reaping on the natural world, and this is affecting human behavior. However, some companies are working more ethically, and an example is the body shop, where their vision is being good, is good for business. This may be enlightened self-interest, but at least it is a step in the right direction. As the Tibetan tells us, people are awakening to the realization that they are the victims and the exponents of forces of which they have no control and of which they have no understanding. They would like to assume control over them and are determined to do so whenever possible. This constitutes a major problem today in the, in the economic field and in the field of daily living and of government. The new group of World Service are working towards inaugurating a new era in consciousness, recognised as we enter the era of Aquarius, an electrifying life force is pulsating through humanity. This may give us a positive sense of the future. However, the principles of oneness, cooperation and interdependence are rubbing up against entrenched ideas of competition and separation, producing the, these chaotic testing times that we are living in now. Ancient writings speak of such times as initiatory, providing all the requirements for transformation. Next slide. A gifting economy, so what does that look like? Weinstein, who focuses on the importance of gifting and the role local currencies have in this, points out that the more we gift, the more we feel our connections. He says that the gift is a manifestation of an underlying unity of being and says that the old economic regime is unfriendly to it as it concentrates wealth, excludes those that cannot pay, is impersonal and shatters community connection. Sacred economy bears the opposite of all these conditions. It is egalitarian, inclusive, personal, bond creating, sustainable and non-accumulative. He goes on to say that such an economy is coming. The old one cannot last. It is time for, to prepare for it by living from its principle today. 
Now, stepping into a gift mentality, let your heart guide you. Let your giving arise from gratitude and not the desire to measure up to some standard of virtue. Taking first steps could be random acts of kindness, paying it forward with no agenda, no recognition, no reward. If you run a business, you could convert a small part of it to a gift model. Whatever steps you take, know that you are preparing for the economy of the future. Next slide. It is our awakening relationship with money that constitutes a major test for humanity today. Will we continue to support a system that rewards the few at the expense of the many? Or will we be led by the men and women of goodwill and all those who are motivated by unselfish purpose to release the energy of money towards the good of the whole? Such new methods are already permeating human minds, leading to movements like recycling, growing one's own, supporting local producers, gifting, sharing, barter and exchange. Often these are accompanied by local currencies of which there are said to be in excess of 400 operating in the UK alone. An example is the Brixton Pound. Over 3,000 are said to be functioning in Argentina with more than 600 in both the USA and France. They are in use throughout the world and encourage community and interdependence. It is to this that the thinkers and writers such as Weinstein and Lita contribute. Such ideas provide a thought form of solution that helps to guide humanity to slay the hydra of money and pass through this important test in triumph and thus allow men and women to be free to live and move in beauty and to seek the lighted way. Next slide. Weinstein eloquently states, in the sense of self-determination, a more beautiful world is something we can create. I, think I have given great evidence of its possibility. The demise of a monetary system dependent on exponential growth, a shifting consciousness toward a connected self in co-creative partnership with Earth, and the many ways in which pieces of a sacred economy are already emerging. Given how much of the evil and ugliness of the present world order can be traced to money, can you imagine what the world will be like when money has been transformed? A beautiful metaphor from Weinstein illustrates, a vein runs through spiritual tradition that says that we too give back to the sun. Indeed, that the sun only continues to shine through our gratitude. Ancient sun rituals went only to thank the sun. They were to keep it shining. Solar energy is the light of earthly love reflected back at us. Here, too, the circle of the gift operates. And let us imagine what a future will look like in a gifting economy. Let us link in subjective thought to vitalize the transformation of our current monetary and system of economics. This creative work allows us to tap into the rain cloud of knowable things to anchor solutions of a transformed reality. One that is in relationship with all the kingdoms in nature. Holding this point of tension, Frida will now lead us into our meditation work. Thank you. Thank you. So please sit quietly. We're going to use our power of thought to energize this goal. We visualize our group centers as we take a unified breath and align ourselves within the group field. Our hearts unite across distance and we extend our group light to illuminate and experience the loving heart of Gaia that is ever present in the one life.
As a group, we lift our consciousness. We look at Mother Earth, our beautiful planet Gaia, in all her beauty. And with all the present challenges. We see the sustainable development goals as a blueprint that countries have agreed to through the United Nations. A blueprint for the creation of a new and better world. So we hold this thought form or blueprint in the group mind as we now focus our attention on goal eight, decent work and economic growth. So I'm going to read through the entire goal. Sustain per capita economic growth in accordance with national circumstances in particularly at least 7% gross domestic product growth per annum in the least developed countries. Achieve higher levels of economic productivity through diversification, technological upgrading and innovation, including through a focus on high value added and labor intensive sectors. Promote development-oriented policies that support productive activities, decent job creation, entrepreneurship, creativity, and innovation, and encourage the formation and growth of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, including through access to financial services. Improve progressively through 2030 global resource efficiency in consumption and production and endeavor to decouple economic growth from environmental degradation in accordance with the 10 year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production with developed countries taking the lead. By 2030, achieve full and productive employment and decent work for all men and women, including for young people and persons with disabilities and equal pay for work of equal value. By 2020, substantially reduce the proportion of youth not in employment, education or training. Take immediate and effective measures to eradicate forced labor, end modern slavery and human trafficking, and secure the prohibition and elimination of the worst forms of child labor, including recruitment and use of child soldiers, and by 2025, end child labor in all its forms. Protect labor rights and promote safe and secure working environments for all workers, including migrant workers, in particular women migrants, and those in precarious employment. By 2030, devise and implement policies to promote sustainable tourism that creates jobs and promotes local culture and products. Strengthen the capacity of domestic financial institutions to encourage and expand access to banking, insurance, and financial services for all. Increase aid for trade and support for developing countries, in particular, least developed countries, including through the enhanced integrated framework for trade related technical assistance to least developed countries. By 2020, develop 
and operationalize a global strategy for youth employment and implement the Global Jobs Pact of the International Labour Organization. Now we're going to ponder our own vision of what the manifestation of Goal 8 looks like. So we'll have a moment of silence for you to ponder and put into the group field your own vision for what Goal 8 will look like when it's fully manifest. And so as we register our impressions, we see this beautiful goal, Goal 8, expressing itself through various initiatives and outcomes. We see this energy or this principle of right sharing being spread throughout the world. We see this sacred economy starting to manifest. And we recognize that it will manifest through us. As we change our vision, as we change our behaviors, we influence the world, the connected world of which we are a part. As we realize the livingness of no one left behind, the slogan of the Sustainable Development Goals. We see resilience being built into our planetary consciousness. 
we see this resilience manifested through practical and sustained actions throughout the world. We now anchor the thought form, the ideas that we have seeded into the group field, and distribute the energy gathered as we sound the following mantra. And please feel free to say it along with me if you know it. Let the forces of light bring illumination to humankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all those of goodwill everywhere meet in the spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Thank you so much, Frida and Michael and Silvana. Just a wonderful set of thoughts to stimulate us all. So we now come to the time when everyone can share thoughts and impressions after after that meditation. So. Um, Yes, um, I think there's a facility to raise your hand. Um, where do we find that, Alexander? Can you help us just to guide everyone through how they can share in this platform? Yes, um, I think there should be a function to raise your hand. Um, but I guess in Zoom, it's a little bit easier for us because everyone can just be in control of own microphone. So whenever you would like to speak, please uh, unmute yourself. Unless there is, um, would be too many unmuted people, then probably we would use the function of raising the hand. But so far I, uh, I saw Sheldon raising the hand. So please Sheldon, unmute yourself. Thank you, thank you all. This has been a um, <clears throat> very interesting, um, how would I say, um, participation in this meditative process and hearing um, Rita reading through the, the detail of, of goal eight, what struck me was um, two things, but, but one of them was that 
decent work and economic sharing, supposed economic growth, the burden of what Michael, I think, and Silvana were talking about, one of the burdens is that we, we just cannot keep on growing with this usurious interest rate process in place. And what, what, this, what you all were talking about was a, a different kind of orientation that needs to be brought. So I thought this, this goal um, um, will be changed, must be changed. Uh, so that it reflects uh, these, the kind of values that we're talking about uh, here. Otherwise, we just keep on growing and trying to do a little bit less pollution and the usual things that are keeping on the system as it is right now. So it's a different kind of, of Libran balance that's, that, that's, that's achieved in, in your words to us. So thank you very much for that. I would also say that um, if you haven't had a chance to read Charles Eisenstein or Bernard Leotard or some of the other writers in this field, it is, it is very exciting to see um, what's been talked about and what is being talked about today, not only, not only with the local currencies that are out and about to some extent, but also um, the total necessity for thinking along these lines so that everyone indeed, no one is left out. We all will have the basics. <clears throat> it's on the basis of sharing so that um, um, everyone in the world um, and the earth itself uh, can live and grow. So that was some of my thoughts here. And I, I say once again, thank you for, for this um, presentation. And what you did, as I say, was put this kind of, of uh, hierarchical overlay on top of this. And I think that's exactly the direction in which we need to move. Thanks, Sheldon. And um, if anyone hasn't found the, the little chat bubble um, in the bar down at the bottom, you can also type into the chat box um, by clicking on that. Um, and there's a message from Karen Gendron here saying, enlightening in every sense of the word. Thank you. Um, do any of the focalizers want to say anything in response to what Sheldon said? Um, yeah, this is Frida speaking. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I thought Sylvana did a really good job of presenting this, this idea of uh, no interest. Um, you know, I came around to this idea quite slowly, having been one of those people that were raised, went to business school and, you know, learned all about the present value of money and, you know, um, felt that, you know, we're renting money, uh, it's not for free, we should always pay interest. Uh, so it took me a while to come around to this way of thinking. But, um, you know, when, when you do grasp it, you do realize that this whole um, uh, charging of interest is tremendously unhelpful to our economy and does lead to both inflation and kind of the boom bust cycles that we've always experienced. Um, so, you know, having a serious discussion, there's when I did my homework, there's only a couple of places around the world or a couple of credit unions that are trying out new forms of lending that don't involve uh, the charging of interest. And, uh, you know, we need to kind of nurture these new, um, new methods and, and see if they work um, because getting away from charging interest, I think is going to be one of the key, key changes that we all have to make uh, to bring in the sharing economy. Thank you. Um, I have something to add. It's Daisha here. Thank you for a beautiful presentation. Um, and the thought that came to me is the concept of enough. So getting away from this notion of abundance or scarcity of being the only way we can think about the economics of human life and instead realizing that this planet provides enough for all the life forms upon it. And when we make sure that every living being on the planet has enough to meet those um, 
needs that you so beautifully reminded of us, us the, um, the pyramid of needs, the Maslow hierarchy there. Um, then there is a true sharing of the abundance of what we have here. So thank you very much. This is Sheldon, just one more, one more thought. Most of you, I think, are familiar with the, uh, the work, hopefully, of Hazel Henderson. And if you haven't uh, come across her in recent times, just look her up on Google. She has a video series that's been going on for years now and gives marvelous illustrations of where these, some of these experiments are going on and the direction in which we are very slowly moving. But um, these are, case studies and talking with uh, thinkers, uh, current thinkers, about um, what we face and how we can move forward. But Hazel's work is uh, um, another, another angel for us to um, work with. Thanks, Sheldon. And I noticed that Avon had your hand up at once before. Did you want to speak, Avon? Please unmute yourself if you. Well, part of what I was going to speak of was actually Hazel's work. And <laughs> there's, a, there's a Greek word uh, for economy called oikos. And the meaning behind economy from the Greek interpretation is stewardship of the household, meaning the household is for the common good which includes people and planet. The word profit is not in there at all. It's just people and planet. And this, this was a, a, a way of living in a peaceful way with all, with all lives, so to speak. And so that pertains to the defined circulatory flow. One of the things that came through in the recent high-level political forum on the Sustainable Development Goals at the UN um, one of the common threads was about reconstruction of the ways that money is used because it's the only way that divine circulatory flow using our terminology but the terminology that was, that was used by many representatives of many nations and was about the importance of taking out the middle people of having direct contact of supporting that which is local and being in relationship, being in relationship and equal balanced relationship with those who are the suppliers and those who are the ones who are receiving. So that it is that part of the relationship of circulatory flow where you support the organizations and the companies and the people that are locally in your own area. And there are many, many um, lists that you can go that anyone can have access to and share with others that have to do with sustainable businesses that rate them on their sustainability that have to do with the their benefit to the community etc so this is an action that each one of us can take and that was another aspect that was brought up during the high level political forum was the importance of the individuals, the importance of local communities, and how that contributes to the global oikos or economy, i.e. attending and caring for our common household. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Avon, for bringing those points out. And, um, one of the thoughts that came was for me was um, that what you've just articulated that sharing and right distribution isn't only about money and resources but it's actually also includes the sharing of responsibility 
and agency and power in um, economy. So really dissolving the um, line between capital and labour and moving into relationship and a more collaborative endeavour in the way we govern economy. I totally agree with you, Rebecca. I just, um, and it's also, I suppose, even the economy of needs. Um, I think sometimes we, um, the difference between needs and wants, and I think that readjustment needs to be made even within, within the human psyche, that we have more than we need in, in first world countries and, and there, there isn't enough for, for those that are in the emerging countries. So I think that economy needs to be practised even within our own mindsets um, in terms of having, just knowing that it is enough, you know, to take on a little bit more of a minimalist approach rather than having to, you know, really play to those desires that we, that, that, that we want um, more and more of and that's what is being marketed at us. And I think that that, that whole... Um, paradigm needs to shift and I think it is shifting because there is such a, a desire to actually support local and, um, and, and the community and uh, for me it was very illuminating to learn about all these currencies that are currently available that I had no idea about so it is trying to we are trying to get back to fostering that culture of community and as you say um, uh, Rebecca, it's about relationships so uh, and building those relationships again that we seem to have uh, lost in this whole capitalist sort of um, paradigm. Thank you. Yes, and wonderful to hear from Avon that this is these things are actually being discussed as you know in part of the high level forums as well. That's so important. Perhaps uh, as students of the ageless wisdom, it becomes our responsibility through our thought initially and uh, then through conversations with others sort of in a grassroots manner uh, to enlighten public opinion. Because when all is said and done, you know, the old adage, when all is said and done, there's more said than done. Uh, mm -hmm. we, should, we should be active participants in uh, making, making this spiritual economy possible. This is Sheldon one more time. <laughs> this happened to, uh, living in California, you know, there's a bill that's about to be signed by the governor of California for public banking. And I think most of you have heard about this and have been seeing a bit more on the news, uh, uh, some of the states that, that, that are moving in this particular direction. This is a very small step, but, but a big step in terms of the way money is thought about today. So uh, when we begin to move toward public banking and the money gets used much more locally to go back to something that David was talking about. And there's monies that can be used within a state, um, you know, North Dakota being the original user or creator of the system back many years ago. Uh, I think we're going to begin to see even more change uh, in this direction, moving away from the interest based, moving toward something that's much more uh, open and this several of you have been talking about here, just um, each of us having enough. That's all we need. And, and then the joy that comes from just that and not being saturated by all the stuff that one can conceivably buy if one wants to um, would be a welcome relief. Public banking, important to uh, keep track of.
Thanks, Sheldon. And um, during the presentations um, or the, the stimulus or the, what we heard from the focalizers, there was mention of an experiment that's going on. Was it in Denmark or Norway? Was it Finland? Finland. Gosh, my. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> didn't point that, did I? I just feel, yeah. Um, but could you talk to us a little bit more about that, Silvana? Um, oh, I don't know too much about it. The universal basic income has been um, trialled and something that I've been really interested in, uh, in terms of equalising um, the playing field for everybody. And it's about not leaving it, uh, anyone behind. Um, and I think that interest is 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 so um, uh, that passion for, for for some sort of um, basic wage that has no strings attached. Um, for me, um, it's because in my a personal friend of mine is in that, and through circumstances some, not even of her own making, she finds herself needing to just um, exist. And there are so many in that position. And there is so much judgment put on any sort of welfare payments here in Australia. And I'm not sure if that is a broad kind of um, uh, thinking about around it. But um, so I don't know too much about it, but it is something that I hoping will continue to grow. So it'd be interesting to see um, and if other countries will take it up. It's certainly been spoken about for some years. Finland is trialling it. I don't know too much more about it, but um, it's something that I think would help, um, um, you know, sort of re reduce poverty and give people at least the means to be able to access, you know, just the very basics of life. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm sorry I can't elaborate too much more on it, but um, maybe I'm going to do a little bit more res research on it and... Um, we can share it another time. Mm. Uh, this is Frida. Uh, I can add that um, Canada in a couple of places has experimented. Um, there was an experiment in Ontario. Um, unfortunately, the experiment was cut short, but um, the principle was that through a basic income, you could simply reduce a lot of the social services and, and the people and the, and the staffing um, that go into all the social services so that governments might potentially save money through this basic income uh, idea um, through to cuts in other areas. So, you know, that's been a theory that's been around for a while and there was an experiment going on in Ontario. Unfortunately, we had a change of government and the experiment was canceled before the results were in. But certainly it's being discussed and thought about here as well. It's a very interesting concept. Uh, because there, there's a homeless problem worldwide. And it's not necessarily because people don't have a job. For instance, uh, my wife went to the craft store a couple of months ago and was talking to one of the employees there who was working two jobs, but living in their car because they couldn't afford a place to live. Uh, which just seems outrageous to me, but uh, and then homelessness is illegal in Columbus, Ohio. The police go out and slash the tents in the homeless camps and uh, destroy what little that the people have. This is Dot. Thank you, Michael. And the sharing and Sheldon and Silvana going back to something that you said, uh, what keeps turning in my mind is, is this triangle of awareness, attitude, action, and calling us to take action ourselves to help raise awareness so that consciousness shifts, attitudes shift and many more of us are willing to take action accordingly. But that triangle of that way of approaching it in terms of doing even more out here, 
uh, to help with the shifting that is well underway. Yeah, and, and the experiments with different models seem so important. So the basic wage, public banking, um, and how we actually action sharing. Um, and I'm reminded of a um, experiment, I'm not sure if it's still operating, but um, RSF social finance were were running an experiment with their grants program where they would invite grant recipients or applicants to come together and decide together how the grant monies would be distributed. So a pretty challenging exercise, but one that um, they managed to get people to participate in working together to decide how the available money would be shared. Um, and I think this is the kind of relational exercise that we we need to be working with more in in our economic um, approach to to economy. Um, there's a post here from um, Darcy saying that the hierarchy through DK has given us a meditative occult service activity through the weekly Sunday reflective meditation on attracting money for hierarchical purposes. Um, and everyone can join a weekly with this meditation as we continue to see this pooled spiritual vort vortex which precipitates the lighted ideas and new thought forms into human consciousness. Um, and yes, announcing that um, on the 2025 platform is this, maybe Darcy can correct me, but um, join us as we continue the work on October the 12th at 2 p.m. with the Golden Flow of Money Meditation group focused on that which is needed for the 17 new UN Sustainable Development Goals and all other groups restoring the plan on Earth. Maybe it's a good time now, if Frida, you can say a few more words about this new initiative, a new series of webinars uh, that's been, been brought forward. Um, yes, so um, I'm going to talk uh, about two things. Um, hopefully yesterday you were able to, to participate in the um, webinar um, by the Russian group uh, Universology. Um, it really actually um, um, resonated with what we were doing today. They were talking a lot about visioning um, the, new, um, the new civilization and that was the theme. So. Um, Sasha, you can probably say more on this, but um, we have brought together um, three, um, three focalizers, and then we have uh, two groups from each of three nations, U Russia, UK, and US. Um, we had the first um, webinar was yesterday. It was excellent um, by this group from Russia. And there it is, Manifestation of the New Aquarian Civilization. So you'll see these webinars coming up, um, both um, new moon and full moon meditations and webinars. Um, and I strongly encourage everyone to participate. Um, um, Sasha, I know you had an excellent um, quote from DK about you know, why these three countries are the ones that will, in a way, lead in the manifestation of the Aquarian uh, civilization. Um, but so that's that's uh, number one. Number two is uh, what Darcy um, may, may, may I just uh, interject yeah, right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yesterday was the first webinar in that series, and uh, the next one will be on the coming full moon on October 13th. And um, yesterday, 
they were some technological problems and the quality of sound wasn't very good. So for those who, of you who attended it yesterday, we apologize for that problem. And uh, we asked if Universologists would be willing to record uh, this webinar anew. So we will have a, a, a new recording of this webinar, for, of their presentation. We will share with those people who attended yesterday. And if you will be interested to uh, listen it, it will be available on our YouTube channel uh, after the recording will be uh, done anew. Back over to you, Frida. Great. And so uh, Darcy had alluded to uh, a meditation that we're doing on October 12th that will be leading into the uh, Libra full moon. There it is. Reflective meditation on directing money to the realization of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Quite a mouthful. Um, this is a project um, that uh, some of us on the call, uh, Darcy and I and a few others, um, have been working on uh, since uh, Taurus, the Taurus full moon, and uh, we have uh, been adapting uh, under the, uh, I guess, strong impetus of Martha Gallagher, um the um, uh, meditation that DK has given us, the reflective meditation on attracting money for hierarchical purposes. And we've done a lot of, I guess, thinking, pondering, meditating, as well as reading and, and researching to come up with a very synthetic meditation uh, that we think will help, um, you know, as DK says, break the impasse that uh, prevents sufficient funds flowing into the work, uh, the work of the, of the sustainable development goals into the work that the hierarchy would like to accomplish. So please do join us um, on uh, October 12th. Uh, this will be our sort of public launch of this new meditation, and we hope you all can participate. Thank you. And I probably use this opportunity uh, to say a few words about the impulse of wider esoteric community mobilization, coming, different groups coming in contact with each other as, as a process of strengthening the hands of the new of group of world servers and strengthening the connections, the, the joint hands of the new group of all service as we prepare to the festival week of the new group of all service in December later this year. And we see it, this few months that we have in the lead to the festival week as our time frame, our window of opportunity to reinforce the infrastructure, the communicative, meditative infrastructure between all our groups. So we encourage all the groups who hear us to start looking into the ways how you can contribute into this impulse, how you, what kind of activities you can work with other groups finding partner groups in other countries and other continents, working in triangles on different issues that your group resonates with. And that during the festival week in December, even if each group will be meditating on own thing, hopefully this will be some coordination between uh, different groups but we will work as one wide worldwide group of world servers. So please look together with your group peers, what your group can contribute into this process of revitalization of the meditative infrastructure of the world service group. And this initiative of the reflective meditation for attracting money for the UN's SDGs is just one example of that. And so if you have any ideas that you would like to start any new uh, 
initiative or, or uh, lead focalize the meditation on any particular subject and you would like to have a space to broadcast let us know and we will coordinate and share whatever limited resources we have thank you I think we are getting uh, close to uh, the end of our webinar. And if anyone has any thoughts on the subject of the goal eight or the sustainable development goals as a whole or anything related to this work, please use this time for the final comments. In the chat box, you can see the link to the YouTube channel of the 2025 initiative. Uh, at the moment, there you will find the uh, full version of our archive uh, of the, all the recordings. So please visit it. Um, and share with your uh, colleagues. And um, I want also uh, invite you to join our coming Libra Solar Festival webinar on October 14th with Michael Linfield. And um, as we will meditate on the energies of Libra full moon, we invite you to focus on the topic of choice choice as a deepest manifestation of our values, turning from the unreal to the real. And as we continue our work with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, we invite you to join the ongoing meditation one goal a month and in the coming cycle of libra scorpio we will be meditating on goal 11 and we invite you to join it um, just bringing your focus to this goal every day in your meditation just uh, bringing your uh, attention and asking for impressions and join us uh, on october 29th for the webinar focusing on goal 11 uh, with our uh, focalizers james mills maria christina donadieu and martha gallahue and uh, we encourage you to volunteer to the coming webinars um, especially those in the next year. Um, we're still looking for focalizers for our Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Gemini and Cancer cycles. So if you would like to work in a triangle uh, with uh, other focalizers, same way as today with uh, Frida, Silvana and Michael doing. So please let us know and uh, we will be happy if you step in into the circle of focalizers. Rebecca Dutt, did I forgot to mention anything? Anything else we would like to highlight? I think we're good, Alexander. 
<clears throat> I agree. <laughs> so thanks everyone for joining today and continuing holding the focus in our circle on the sustainable development goals. So would you lead us, Rebecca, in our closing alignment, please? Sure. So just having a moment of quietness to close. I'm drawing together the thoughts that have been generated with gratitude for the opportunity to share in this way. And may the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. Thanks for being with us, everyone.